Hey, Kate, what did you eat last night? Wine and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> now, mm-hmm. I have not heard of this wine and cheese. <laughs> Can you describe? <laughs> it's pretty much what I would eat every night of my life if that was acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had had I had had a dinner party, and so I had a bunch of cheese. I do cheese plates a lot of times at a dinner party, and I had a bunch of cheeses left over. And you know what are you going to do? So <laughs> consume, <laughs> consume, consume. Exactly. So I had one called a Delice de Bourgogne, which is a soft cheese in the brie family, but it's more more pungent a little bit. It's delicious, creamy, like a triple cream cheese. Nice. And then I had a really good cheddar and gouda or chowda. <laughs> I believe it is pronounced. Uh huh. And then I had some baguette and pretzels and a chardonnay, and it was fantastic. And and some grapes. That experience is how you know God exists. Mm, It's so good. It's just so good. How about you? What did you have? I had a corn, cherry tomato, arugula, and blue cheese salad. And it was super simple. I basically took like a pint of cherry tomatoes, have them, put in some celery, put in some red onion, a package of arugula. And balsamic vinegar, olive oil, and of course, like a really, really great blue cheese. Mix it all up. Mm. And it's just this really light, summery salad that I adore. Sounds excellent. Hello, and welcome to another episode of You Won't Believe What I Ate Last Night. I'm Kate DeVore. And I'm Rick Fiore. And this is our ongoing conversation about food, health, weight management, and our endeavor to be and stay healthy in a really tasty world. With love, kindness, and compassion towards ourselves and others. Today, we're going to talk about the paleo diet. Basically, what is it? What are the pros? What are the cons? Do you think you might want to give it a try? Do you think it's for you? And just explaining what this trend is, because it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So (laughs) we're going to talk about it. (laughs) So, Kate, how do you understand the paleo diet? Well, so the paleo diet is sometimes also called the caveman diet or the Stone Age diet. And there's a book called The Paleo Diet by uh, Lauren Cordain. And his premise is that if we eat like our prehistoric ancestors, we're going to be leaner and we're going to be less likely to get diabetes, heart disease, cancer and other health problems and a whole bunch of other things. Our skin is going to be better, like all sorts of things are going to be better if we follow this diet. Yeah. That's my understanding of what it is. Yeah. Exactly. And throw in that our digestive tract is going to be better. The way we poop is going to be better. Everything's going to be better. It's so interesting. Mm -hmm. And it can always be summed up by one question What would a caveman eat? (laughs) (laughs) What would a caveman eat? W W C E. Yeah. Good to know. An important question. That's right. So I guess 60 million years ago, the early primates, our earliest relatives were eating fruit and leaves and insects. And then 2.6 million years ago, how many they figured out (laughs) 2.6 million. (laughs) That's good. They figured out how to hunt and gather. And And that ruined everything for us. That is the era that we're focused in, is the hunting, I think. And then exactly. 10,000 years ago, that's when agriculture came in and we started actually growing things and keeping animals and husbandry and all of that stuff. So this is before the era of agriculture, which I'm sure there's a very good reason why that's the era that he thinks. <laughs> but I don't know what it is to you, why it's that particular one and why it needs to be pre-agricultural. I don't. And this is sort of one of the big, you know, I think thoughts out there about picking this time period of all of our evolutionary history. Why this one? Because we've had so many. Because one of the big things they always say is, well, you know, okay, you have to go back to eat as the caveman ate. But, you know, if we did, we're still trying to eat as the caveman eats, ate so much of what they ate isn't around anymore. Yeah, <laughs> so many of the exactly. plants and animals that we'd all be a lot thinner. One of the things I always <laughs> like they say is like the average homo sapien back then. That's what I love. Average homo sapien, tall, mm-hmm. muscular, agile, athletic, and incre- incredibly versatile. And the average homo sapien now, overweight, out of shape. Stressed out, unhappy, sleep deprived, and dying from a myriad of preventable diseases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, when you look at it just like that, it seems like any era that isn't now is better, probably. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. In a lot of ways. Yeah. So, 
the things that we eat in the paleo diet or that people eat in the paleo diet, uh, there's a lot of good qualities because it emphasizes whole foods, lean proteins, vegetables, fruits, and healthy fats. So in general, those are good things to eat. Right. It's going to include seafood. And the other thing it seems to you know, one of the things they seem to talk a lot about is that when you eat those sort of lean proteins, to really try and make them sort of what we talk a lot about too, that they're always grass fed, right? That they're lean and they're also sort of super clean proteins. Yeah, I don't think that they even need to be lean, which is one of the things that we'll talk about later. But it does need to be grass fed and properly raised, I think. But they want you to eat the whole animal. So that includes bone marrow and things that are really rich and fatty and all the organs, the awful, which which is which is great. I think, you know, more power to you. Eat the whole animal if you're going to eat it. That's right. Exactly. If that little thing died, then, you know, it it should go to use (laughs) for sure. (laughs) Absolutely. So we're we're eating animals. We're eating animals products like eggs and honey, Mm -hmm. vegetables and fruits, plant-based oils such as olive, walnut, grape seed, and coconut oil. Yep. And uh, raw nuts and seeds. Yeah. So that's pretty much the list of what you eat. I think that's pretty inclusive, right? That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. (laughs) Not possible for a vegetarian or a vegan. So we'll just say that straight up. No. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think impossible because you, there's no protein source. <laughs> so I think the whole point of all the meat is that's where you get your protein. And if you if you can't have yeah. legumes or beans of any the, kind. Yeah, there is the fish. But I'm like, how much fish can one eat? Because Oh, least... I meant a real vegetarian. Oh, yeah, 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 vegetarian. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I do right. have to say, I think about the paleo diet. And I just thought about it today when we were talking about recording this episode. I'm always so struck when I walk through a store and I just see those big chunks of meat like on a board. And someone's cutting from it and people are just lining up to eat it. And I always think, oh, that's I always think that's how the cavemen eat. They just carved their meat up right there and ate it right away. And in this particular store, that meat stand that they carve from, which I love, I love to see it because it's always stationed right between the flowers and the greeting cards. (laughs) Just on this (laughs) cart. Wait, there's, <laughs> wait a minute, there's just a cart of someone cutting up a slab of meat in the middle of the store? Can we two slabs of meat? It's very odd, and this is a well-known grocery and are chain. People, are people buying this meat? Yes. Or is it a, sa- like, is, are you, is it a sandwich, or like, what? what is it? It's literally someone standing there cutting the meat off these carcasses. People are standing there with their takeout trays to literally have it loaded up. Huh. I know, right? And I guess they're getting a greeting card and flowers also. <laughs> I have to say, we don't have that in our stores here. I mean, we, we have like little food court areas yeah. where you might go and there might be a barbecue thing where there might be something. But that's not what you're talking about. No, it sounds like not at all. <laughs> all right. It's very odd. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be a, a happy paleo person right there. Exactly. <laughs> you can get your, your hunk of meat. Hey, did you know? Hey, Kate, did you know one of the most popular pizza toppings in Brazil is green peas? No, but I just had a pizza with green peas on it the other night, and it was amazing. What are the chances? Mm-hmm. So we've started to touch on some of the things that you can't eat or that you're that you're supposed to avoid. Yeah. So legumes, beans is a big one. Grains such as oats, wheat, barley, and rice, which also means cereal, no bread, no pasta, bagels, crackers, or granola bars. Yeah, even the whole grains are out, which is interesting because a lot of diets that tell you you can't have white flour uh, will still allow whole grains. Right. So that's a big one that that makes people raise their eyebrows sometimes. Starchy vegetables such as potatoes, corn, and definitely tortillas and corn chips. (laughs) Yeah, I'm pretty sure that they would have had those things, maybe. But the point is that they're starchy and so we're not supposed to have them. (laughs) Exactly. So it's almost paleo. Paleo, except (laughs) paleo if you paleo people were sitting at a desk, maybe. (laughs) And no dairy products. Yeah, no dairy, because I guess we I guess they weren't keeping cows yet. So they weren't they didn't have the dairy. (laughs) Nor did they have Um, any ice cream machines. Yeah, (laughs) heavily processed oils. Mm. So no canola or soybean oil. So even though soybean oil comes from soybeans, it's processed so much that it's off the list. And I did not know this, Kate. I did not realize that our ancestors were not hunting salami or pepperonis. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you need a really small arrow to get those little pepperonis when they're cavorting in the field. <laughs> Nor did I realize they did not have hot dogs. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's funny though because I think a lot of paleo people do eat a lot of salami, salami yes. and bacon and oh, all that right. stuff. Like it, it's like what was it Atkins that was all like, I'll have seven pounds of bacon and totally be all the really fatty stuff. Yeah, and anything processed in general, pretty much. Um, yeah, <laughs> sugars such as in soda, honey, jams, syrups, candy, cakes, cookies, sports drinks. That's a lot, man. Yeah. So honey, I think, is pretty much the only sweetener that is allowed, if mm. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. All right. And my favorite, salty foods. Yeah. What's High this? salt is is not allowed. Right. On the website for the paleo diet, they have things you can't eat, and he has salt. that You just can't eat salt, which just seems tough. I just don't. I can't even respond to that. You know, my, you know how much I love salt. Do you and- like salt cake? <laughs> And not even just that I like things a little saltier than most people. It's ever since I learned about how what salt does and how it brings out the flavor in foods, Mm -hmm. I can't imagine. And it's the one thing people get chopped for all the time on cooking shows is under seasoned food. (laughs) You have to have salt. So I do not think the cavemen would have done very well on chopped. That's that's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I'm sure Ted would have found a way to keep them on. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So a lot of this makes sense, right? You're avoiding starch. You're getting lots of protein. Yeah. Avoiding processed food. You're getting lots of protein and lots of fiber. Yeah. So these things really useful. Uh Uh-huh. And it makes sense that if you cut out sugar, then you're going to lose weight. And you're going to probably feel better. I actually asked my friend Carrie the other night because he has he's the only person I really know who has followed this pretty strictly for a period of time. He doesn't do it all the time, but he goes through periods and he did went through phase. Yeah. And now he just sort of has his own variation that he's created, which is what I think a lot of people do. But for him, he said that it made him just feel a lot lighter, not just physically, Mm. but energetically, that he just felt like he had he described it as a pancake in the belly feeling (laughs) like there was just like something sitting in his belly. And he said, and it wasn't even literal. It was even when he was empty. That was sort of how he was feeling. It felt like an energy thing. And and so this helped with that. And I asked if if he had just cut out gluten and sugar at any other time of his life, cut out wheat and and sugar, if that had had a similar effect. And he said he thought it had. Mm. Well, that just goes back to the whole idea of clean eating, right? When you Mm -hmm. eat cleaner, it just is less for your system to process. And then when you have less in your system to process, you're just able to do more. You have more energy for other things rather than just churning through your system all the things that really aren't digestible on all Mm -hmm. the fake foods. Yeah. Yeah. And good fats, fruits, vegetables, lean protein, whole foods, like there's just nothing wrong with any of those things. Yeah. Um, So what are some things that might raise a red flag to to folks what are some of the yeah buts <laughs> uh, yeah but uh so one of the main things is can you sustain it as a lifestyle right and this goes back to really the whole endeavor of our podcast there's so much out there in the tasty world right there's mm-hmm. so many great things to try that they say you shouldn't be doing so that to me is like a you know a tough one is it a li- is can it be a lifestyle choice i was reading some interview with a doctor online and she just made this really great statement about how she actually loves diet if you think about fad diets as a way to clean up your system every once in a while, you know, sort of like we've mm-hmm. talked about cleansing. I think that's sort of an interesting way to think about it, you know? Yeah, I think doing it for a little bit seems great. And and I think you have to use judgment about not eating eight ounces of beef a day. Yeah. <laughs> even though technically that's allowed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think the the assumption is that people will use some common sense in applying the guidelines. Right. But indeed, one of the concerns that I have is that it's an awful lot of meat, like having meat be. Now, you can have eggs, right? So eggs are there, too, which is which is major. But right. to not really have any other protein source. Uh, is a little tough, I think. I also get concerned about any diet that omits whole categories of food, like grains or legumes. Yeah. To me, and and when I read about it, like nutritionists and experts will will say that's always a red flag in terms of a whole life thing, which which makes sense. Because one of the things our evolutionary, we've learned from our evolutionary history is that some of those grains and things we've added in since this paleo age are good. They're good for us. (laughs) They're not super harmful. Yeah. So that's sort of the whole way, thing about how our system learns to adapt and learn new things and like new things, particularly because so many of the grains that we have right now are really popular and they're around because they've been chosen, they've been selected and they've been you know, produced because they're generally some of the safest things out there as far as that category goes. 
Mm-hmm. And certainly whole grains. I mean, we're not yeah. talking about processed flour like in pasta right. or white bread. And there are people who would say, who would argue that grains cause inflammation. So I, when I was doing my original cleansing and restructuring my diet a few years back, and I did a lot, a lot, a lot of research about you know what to eat and what not to eat, what were the healthiest foods out there. And there's a little bit of a conflict among the professionals about grain and whether grains are good for you not good for you but basically if i'm if i'm understanding the literature correctly the majority of people fall down on the side of grains are more good than they're not good agreed yeah and again this goes back to the whole thing about using your own judgment right if something doesn't sit well with you best not to consume it yeah, exactly. And if if you're one of those 1% of people who has celiac disease or one of a larger percent, but not that big, I think, who really has a gluten intolerance, then obviously anything with gluten in it is not a good idea. But I think a lot <laughs> totally. of us, I know that I do not have any sort of negative reaction to gluten and uh, good whole grain bread sits just fine with me. And yes, legumes have carbs, but they're good carbs and we need those good carbs. Yeah. And in fact, that's another potential problem is not having enough carbs can cause stuff in your blood sugar it can cause you to binge Lack and, of energy. and it can do all kinds of stuff yeah uh the other thing jumping back to the diet the protein thing is that too much protein is also not really good for a lot of your vital organs particularly something like the kidneys so one of the things that's tricky about this diet is you've got to make sure that you're really getting a, the right combination of protein along with the right vegetables to balance it out did you know hey rick would you like to know what's in the chicken breast strips from subway <laughs> I don't know, Kate. Do I want to know? Since you don't eat it, you probably do. Here's what's in it. Boneless, skinless chicken breast with rib meat, water, flavor, potassium chloride, maltodextrin, sugar, autolyzed yeast extract, gum arabic, molasses, flavors, salt, lactic acid, disodium guanolate, and disodium inosinate, fructose, medium chain triglycerides, dextrose, dextrose, succinic acid, vinegar solids, thiamine hydrochloride, and artificial flavors, soy protein concentrate, modified potato starch, sodium phosphates, and salt. It doesn't seem that big to hold all that. The little chicken breast strip that goes on your sandwich. Wow, that's depressing. Another thing is that people, even though to our knowledge, the people in this era didn't have things like diabetes and stuff like that, they did have other health issues, including apparently hardening of the arteries. Yes, totally. Probably from all the cholesterol and all the meat, I'm <laughs> guessing, right? Quite like, possibly, yes. <laughs> I was reading this article where there, you know, there's a study done on a bunch of mummies and they were finding it in more and more mummies as the years go on when they do those re- that research. They're finding those hardened <laughs> arteries. So there you go. Yeah. And the lifestyle was different, right? Yeah. I think one of the things that's so different between us is they were all hunting for their food. They were out doing things for their food. They were burning a lot of calories while they were consuming a lot of meat, which yeah. we're not really doing nowadays because we don't have to go out and hunt and gather our our food. You know, right. It, they were lean because of all the physical activity. And were they eating that much meat? I mean, if like one family killed a boar, were, you know, like were, they probably weren't eating pounds of meat every day. Yeah. I'm guessing it was a, it was maybe it was a treat. And then maybe they would go a month without a boar or whatever. And this goes back to the whole very idea, the whole sort of idea of evolution in our food is that, you know, they would eat meat and they would eat a lot of it then and there because they didn't know when the next kill was going to come from. So, right. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's why they had a lot of parasites also, because they <laughs> didn't have refrigeration. <laughs> so there's that. Exactly. Um, too. And they also mostly died before 40, like they Tough didn't times. Live past their reproductive years. So it's hard to know what their health would have actually been like. So I guess there were some questions raised about the validity of some of the research. And just in terms of paleo in general, there's there's only, there's less than 10 published studies with very yeah. small numbers, participants, many of whom dropped out in the middle because they found this, <laughs> the diet too hard to maintain. So the data on it, the actual scientific data, isn't particularly strong. Wrong if if that's something that's important to you in making a decision. The other thing that's interesting is paleo can be expensive too <laughs> to maintain, mm. particularly if you want to go towards the higher end meats. 
if you want to go towards the meats that are grass fed, are going to have a minimal amount of toxins in them. That's sort of one of the other things to maintain it for an extended period of time. That is so true because I do buy that kind of meat and it is by far my biggest expenditure in my grocery budget. Yeah. And we've often talked about this. I, I don't know if we've talked about it on the podcast, but I've often said I haven't eaten meat for years, but I often wonder if I went back now, if I would have a different you know, liking to it because I think I would be more, I would definitely be buying the higher end meats. I mean, I never mm. ate really great meat. I mean, I haven't eaten meat since 95. And so at that time, I mean, you know, I was getting my meat from like Burger King, Denny's and this place would go when I was a younger kid called Mr. Steak, which is basically... <laughs> is <laughs> in the bottom of some hideous office building and we go there and that was one of the places we'd go out to dinner once a week and that was considered really awesome and really nice and then it was just these flat slabs of steak on a plate it's not even like you had much of a choice and even then I remember not even really liking meat I'd always be like oh god I have to eat meat I have to go to Mr. Steak can't we just go to the Chinese place folks that's all I wanted to do yeah I, I, I don't I don't want to eat at, at Mr. Steak right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No offense to Mr. Steak. Please don't sue us. <laughs> I do yeah. have to say, like, when I was doing a lot of this research and thinking about it, I like still, when I think about this whole concept, which always presents itself to us, which is eat well, eat natural foods, right? I literally, even while I think about it and I'm seeing all these pictures of meat and all these videos online, I really do just feel like an automatic thing that happens in my body. Like I, when I read about it, I'm like, my body craves it. Like it makes sense in my brain mm -hmm. why all of this would work really well for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would imagine it would be good for your constitution, actually, probably yeah. a little meat in there. Yeah. yeah that's well, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe before you pass off this shuffle off this mortal coil perhaps you'll you'll eat meat again i think it's a possibility no doubt i have a friend helen who she's like she was like 85 when she had a stroke and she was so proud that she'd given up meat for all these years and one of the reasons she'd given up meat she'd been off meat for like 30 40 years is you know because of wanting it to prevent her having a stroke <laughs> And so when she had the stroke, she, she literally was like, F that. I'm going back to eating meat. She's been eating meat ever since. And she's now 91. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. Well, the die was cast at that point, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is the lack of dairy. And I know that some people say we shouldn't eat dairy, that we can't digest dairy, and that dairy is not good for us, and lactose. And there are, again, a, a number of people who are lactose intolerant, and, and I know that adults aren't supposed to drink milk and all of that. But Greek yogurt is one of my primary um, protein sources. Mm. It's a big deal for me, and I really like it. So, Isn't the milk an interesting thing? I don't know if I remember this correctly, but in our evolutionary cycle, isn't milk one of the things that we've learned to adapt to? And we develop the gene because usually we have the gene that shuts it off because you get it in the beginning when you get it for your from your, your mother. And then that gene would shut off. But because milk has become so more readily available over the years, I, if I understand it correctly, we've learned to keep that gene on that processes milk and wants milk. So isn't hmm. that like another example of like how, you know, what is our evolutionary history? I mean, how do you really know and what changes? To me, it's that whole idea that you don't really know. You don't know unless you were there. I always sort of like to think, you know how they always say, how did they build those pyramids all those years ago? And the only reason mm -hmm. we don't know is because we just don't know that what the tools are. Maybe <laughs> they had the tools and the tools just aren't around. Maybe they had cranes back then. Who knows? But all the cranes were just disposed of. Who knows? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I know. We have this assumption they couldn't possibly have had anything as sophisticated as what we no. have. Like, have they, it's so arrogant. Why? <laughs> Why couldn't they have? <laughs> because we only exist in this time and space, Kate. <laughs> That's right. It only gets better. Yeah. Uh, although maybe there is certain documentation suggesting things yeah. <laughs> that people have figured out. <laughs> so, like, what's the take home here? So that's basically what it is. So it's it's really very simple. It seems to me that if you just add in grains and legumes and don't make meat be the primary protein source necessarily, it's largely what everybody says you should do. Eat whole, real food, avoid junk food, avoid sugar. Yeah. I was going to see my big takeaway is, ow, oh, I'm sorry. That's me hitting my head into that brick wall again. It's that whole concept of just eat natural foods, eat what comes from the earth, and get more and more of the crap out of your life more often. <laughs> it's just mm -hmm. another lesson in that. Yeah. Cool. 
All right. So we are interested in hearing from you if you know more about this than we do. Have you done the paleo diet? Please let us know your experience. Yeah, exactly. Do you have anything to add? Do you have anything to correct us about? Because we plainly are not experts on this. So um, somebody who's really familiar with it might have something to share. So please let us know. And you can do that by sending us an email at you won't believe what I ate at gmail.com. Or you can visit our website. You won't believe what I ate dot com. You can also send us an audio recording from your phone with your story about the paleo diet. That would be awesome. You can also email it into the, the email address Kate just gave. Mm-hmm. You can follow us on Facebook if you will believe what I ate last night. Which is also what we are on YouTube. Yes. And then our website, you won't believe what I ate dot com. You can also contact us through there. But yeah, send us an email. Send us a little audio recording. Let us know your thoughts on paleo because it seems to be the thing. maintaining traction. Yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs>